Here is another video request. Even though I have already made a video like this one here, someone asked if I could just simply show them how to calculate the riser height for a small set of stairs. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I want to point out is that we're trying to figure out the individual riser height. This would be the height of each step going up the stairway. Second thing I'd like to point out is that each one of them should be the same size. Third thing I need to point out is that the building codes usually allow you a variance, or should I say a variation, of up to 3 eighths of an inch maximum. So if I have seven and a half inches here, seven and a quarter here, seven and three eighths here, seven and a half, seven and a quarter, something like that, then it's going to be okay most of the time. Again, you would have to check with your local building department for more information. Next up, let's go ahead and take the overall height of the area that we're trying to calculate the individual risers for. And this usually isn't going to be that difficult. You're going to have an area where the stairs are going to be starting, maybe a flat landing maybe a concrete pad for a deck, or any other situation where you have a lower level and an upper level, and an area that you can measure so that you can divide the amount of risers into this number to get the individual riser height. Now this video isn't going to provide you with information on how to cut stair stringers or to provide you with information on laying out the stair stringers, just the riser height so that you can lay out the stair stringers. Don't forget I do have some books at the website on stair building and I would recommend if you do get a book to get one of the double book packages that is going to include different scenarios for the bottom of the stair stringer and the top and of course this is for wood framed stairways with something like a 2x12 or a 2x14 for a stair stringer. So now that you can actually see what the riser height is for this particular situation let's go ahead and see how I would figure it out if I didn't know how many risers I was going to have or how many steps I was going to need. Next up, we will break out our trusty calculator and then take the overall rise or the distance between the lower level and the upper level and enter it into the calculator. Now, I'm going to break this down to inches and three foot one and a half inches is going to break down to 37 and a half inches. And then I'm going to put that into the calculator, 37.5. And I'm just going to divide it by the number seven equals 5.35. Now keep in mind that this is not our individual riser height. Remember, for this example, it is seven and a half inches, so we know this isn't it. But what I am going to do is round this number off. And to round a number off, you're simply going to go to a higher or lower number. So if this was 5.7, I would round this off to a six. Anything less than 5.5 is gonna get rounded down. Anything that is 5.5 or higher is going to get rounded up. So if you have 5.5, feel free to use 5 or 6 for your number. And of course, this number is simply going to be the number that we are going to divide into the overall total rise in hopes of getting our individual riser height. So let's go ahead and clear this. 37.5 divided by 5, not 7, brings us to 7.5 inches seven and a half inches. Not that difficult. And of course, for those of you who understand what we're doing here, feel free to stop watching. But I am going to provide a couple of more examples. So let's go ahead and raise the height of this to three foot five and a half inches, which converts to 41.5 inches. Let's go ahead and put in 41.5. And we're going to divide it by seven. Our magic number. Now we have 5.9 so I'm going to go ahead and divide this by 6. Now this should make sense to you. I raised the height of this by 4 inches and now I'm going to be adding another riser. Instead of dividing the number or by 5 I'm going to divide it by 6. So let's go ahead and clear this. 41.5 overall height. I'm going to divide it by 6. 
and that brings us to 6.916. And this right here is about a 16th of an inch, just a little over a 16th of an inch, less than seven inches. So again, hopefully not that difficult. And as you can see here, we have six units at six and 15 sixteenths of an inch or six individual risers. Now, here's what would happen if I divided it by five. I would have got a riser of eight and five sixteenths inches, just a little bit over eight and a quarter inches. And if your building codes don't allow more than a eight inch individual riser height, then this isn't going to work. So you're not going to get into any trouble by dividing different numbers into the original number here. Just start with seven and then work your way up in either direction. So if you do use the number seven, and you get a number like a four or a five. You can use three, four, five, or six. You don't have to be set on one number. Divide a couple of different numbers into the total overall riser height to see if you can come up with the ideal riser height for your job. So again, seven is a good number to start with and then work your way in either direction. Now for the last part of the video, I'm just simply going to take this number here and divide it by seven. So we divided it by six and came up with a riser height of almost seven inches. And now we divide it by seven and come up with a riser height of almost six inches. So this is the perfect example of what I'm talking about, taking and dividing a few different numbers into the overall riser height to get a riser height that you like. And of course, that would be accepted by your local building authorities or building department. So hopefully this makes sense. You can now figure out to the individual riser height that it's not that difficult. You're simply just dividing one number into another number to get the individual riser height. And of course, you can use that measurement then to lay out your stair stringers or build your stairs if you're going to build them out of other materials. In this video, I am going to try and help a viewer and of course help other viewers like yourself who might be having a problem figuring out why we need to adjust the bottom of the stair stringer and how that adjustment will impact the rest of the steps throughout the stairway. And I'm not going to be using a ledger this time. I believe I have other videos on that. In this video, we are going to attach the top of the stringer to the bottom of the flooring, or in other words, have the top of the stair stringer even with the top of the floor joist. Now, the first thing I want to do is explain how each one of the steps will impact all of the stringer riser measurements. So here we have a finished stairway with seven and a quarter inch risers going all the way down to the lower level. And if we go to the lower level, you can see where I've had to adjust the bottom part of the stair stringer. And all I did here was subtracted any materials that the stair stringer was going to be sitting on, along with the thickness of the stair treads. And I'm not going to need to do that for the rest of the stairway unless, and this is the biggie here, unless any of the material sizes change in thickness. So, for example, if I have two inch thick stair treads and one and a half inch thick decking on the top, I'm going to need to adjust the top measurement of the stair stringer to compensate for the difference. And again, to find the total rise of your stairway, you're just simply going to measure from the lower level to the upper level and then divide the amount of risers you have into that number with the understanding that the top of the stringer will not represent the top of the stair tread. And I say that most of the time, you'd have to build the stairs different than what I'm showing you here, because here you can see where the measurement for the finished riser is an inch and a half, or the thickness of the tread, higher than this part of the stair stringer. And again, we're going to work our way down to the bottom where we had to subtract three inches off of our seven and a quarter inch measurement because of the thickness of the tread and the thickness of the sill place we're using to connect the stair stringers to the concrete floor slab. 
If you don't need to use the base plates, then you're only going to be subtracting an inch and a half off of seven and a quarter. And that should make sense looking at this design here. Again, the height of the riser is going to be represented by the difference between the floor and the top of the step. And again, that's just going to be at the bottom. The rest of the measurements for each individual riser should be the same, working your way all the way up to the top of the stairway, unless, like I mentioned earlier, there's a difference in any of the material thicknesses throughout the stairway. So again, the overall total rise is not going to be to the top of the floor joist. It's going to be from the top of the finished floor to the bottom of the top of the lower floor. And if we're going to be using the same tread thickness, then everything should work out by simply cutting the thickness of the tread along with any additional materials you're going to be using in this area here. And if any of this does not make sense, you're still having a problem with it, feel free to provide me with the details of those problems in the comment area. And I'll take a look at them and see if I can provide you with a different explanation if this one here doesn't make sense. Here is another question that popped up on my channel. The individual wanted to know how longer treads, longer steps, affect the width of a stair stringer. And I see this a lot. Someone has a short stair stringer, maybe three or four steps, and they cut it out of a 2 by 10 or they purchase a pre-cut stair stringer that would have been cut out of a 2 by 10 And that would be nine and a half inches from here to the tip when you would lay out the stair stringer if you laid it out in a conventional um, and standard method. Now, here's a 2 by 10 stair stringer with a 7 and 3 quarter inch riser and an 11 inch tread and it has about a 3 and an eighth inch, 3 and a quarter inch. Um, we used to call this the meat of the stair stringer. You know, this isn't very much. This is less than a 2 by 4 and I'm not suggesting that this set of stairs will ever fall apart. And of course you could always nail a um, some support boards underneath it, um, like some wall framing studs, or you could uh, add a two by four or a two by six to the side of it kind of a thing to reinforce it. However, that won't be necessary if you use a two by 12. And here you're gonna have about five and an eighth of an inch. Now, five inches, Seems like that's plenty of lumber to um, use it for the structural strength. Three inches, uh, that's just probably not going to cut it, especially on a longer set of stairs with no support braces underneath it. Now you can always design these stairs accordingly. If you're going to be using supports underneath them or if you are going to have uh, some type of supports that you are going to attach to the side of them, and then it's not going to be a problem. So I don't want to just sit, throw it out there and say, hey, wait a minute, you got to use 2 by 12. It's going to depend upon the design of the stairway. But by now you're starting to get the picture here, 11 inch tread, 7 and 3 quarter inch riser, 2 by 12, this is how much meat we got left on the stringer. 2 by 14 is going to be even larger. And I don't think this is necessary for a small set of stairs. But if you're going to be using a longer um, stringer, something that's going to be 10 to, um, let's just say 16, 20 foot long, something like that, then this is definitely going to help you, especially if you don't have a lot of supports, um, bracing, wall framing studs for the stairway. So you're just going to have a freestanding stairway with 14 steps on it. 2 by 14 is probably going to create a nice, structurally strong stairway. Now here's where the problem starts to um, happen. Instead of having an 11-inch um, tread, we have a 13-inch stair tread, 1 foot, 1 inch stair tread. Now we're going to have 6 inches. 
If this was a 2 by 12, we would have 4 inches. If it was a 2 by 10, we would have 2 inches. Not going to make us, not going to make the structural engineer or the property owner happy. And if we add 2 inches to the step again, making it a 14 inch, a 15 inch stair step, I mean, 15 inch step, 7 and 3 quarter inch riser. Now we're down to 4 and 13 sixteenths, which would be about 4 and 3 quarters, 4 and 7 eighths, something like that um, here. And this still um, might be acceptable depending upon the length of the stair stringer and the design of the stairway. Now I'm going to go ahead and wrap the video up right here because I don't see any other need to go longer and have this measurement go smaller. I think by now you get the picture of how a longer stair step, a, a um, stair tread that is going to be deeper in depth is going to create problems for your structural stair stringer. So longer steps are probably going to require larger um, stringers.